All right, hey, what's up, everybody? Mike Lindsley back with you here at Rosie's Corner in Brewerton, just off of Bartell Road. It's lunch hour, and it's slamming here at Rosie's. People are getting pizza. They're getting wings. They're getting the big entree items. They're getting subs and sandwiches. They're getting chicken and biscuits on Tuesdays. They're getting the Fish Friday uh, special. Make sure you get here to Rosie's Corner. They do have gift cards available for the holidays. They'll deliver. You can come pick up your food. You can dine in. You can do whatever you want. And you see the menus behind me there as well. I will post this 9 Minutes with Mike Lindsley video on IGTV, YouTube, and Facebook, and then put the uh, pictures of the menu up there uh, as well. Just a great, great place, the official pizza shop of the ML Sports Platter. And by the way, don't forget, every single NFL day, Thursdays, Sundays, Mondays, and soon-to-be Saturday NFL days, you can get the ridiculous special of a lifetime at Rosie's. You spend 40 bucks, that's it. You get a large one-topping pizza, chef salad, a large chef salad, two liter of soda, and 24 chicken wings for just 40 bucks. Got to get that deal uh, for NFL uh, game days. All right, I want to talk in this uh, uh, short video about uh, the top five teams in terms of who I've seen uh, in college basketball. I also just had Dana O'Neill on from The Athletic. I just had Jeff Goodman on. Uh, from Stadium on the podcast here this week. And uh, so I, I, I've been kind of putting together a synopsis of a lot of these different teams. I think the number one team in the country is Gonzaga. I, I know uh, if they played a seven-game series with Duke, they'd probably lose 4-2, to two, right? But that's not what this is about. They went head-to-head -head in Maui and played the most entertaining best game of the year, in my opinion, and took care of business against Duke. Gonzaga's really, really good. They're missing a superstar, and I love the backcourt. I mean, that's one of the big reasons why I'm taking them. I mean, I think uh, this Josh Perkins, Zach Norvell Jr. combination in the backcourt is fantastic. This team, Gonzaga, uh, is a major Final Four contender. It's a major national title contender. You wonder, once they get into conference play, though, if they're just going to blow everybody out and then not get major competition until that first, first weekend of the NCAA tournament in the second game. That's the only concern that I really have for Gonzaga. I think Mark Few is an excellent coach, and it's gone incredibly different than it did 20 years ago when they were uh, the Cinderella team. Now they're a team that's being picked in the top five. They're a team that's being picked to win tournaments. They're a team that's being picked to win a bunch of games and go up against other uh, Titanic programs in college basketball and win. Gonzaga's very good. I'll take them at number one. And number two, I will take Duke. I think Duke is, uh, again, with the talent they've got with Cam Reddish, and you look at R.J. Barrett, and then you look at Zion Williamson, who is unlike anybody we've ever seen. I know everybody wants to compare him to LeBron James, but the flat-out fact is LeBron James did not have that shot when he was a senior in high school. I know LeBron's going to go down as one of the top couple players of all time, but I'm just speaking for at the time when these guys were in high school. LeBron James did not have that jump shot uh, that, uh, that Zion Williamson has, flat out. Guy can run up and down the floor like an antelope. He can score from anywhere. Duke's problem is going to be focus, and Duke's problem is going to be depth. I'm just not sure after the starting five about uh, production from role players, etc. Et uh, it's going to be a very, very difficult time uh, for Duke in terms of uh, that depth and, and some of the uh, uh, some of the other things going on uh, in terms of focus, the intangibles, little things that we've seen from one and done teams that have basically cost them, uh, you know, from a Final Four, you know, cost them a Final Four berth, a national championship. Look at Arizona last year. Team lost a ton of focus in the tournament. They got wiped by UB. So uh, this is kind of where uh, we're at with the one and dones, and it's going to be kind of a matter of if this team can kind of buckle down like the team a few years ago with Jill Okafor, Tyus Jones, and Justice Winslow for Duke. But Duke right now, you can't hide the talent. You can't hide the quality of the basketball team. I will put them in at number two. I'm actually going to put Virginia in at number three. I know that sounds pretty crazy to a lot of people. Virginia lost to a 16 seed last Last year, Virginia doesn't play a great offensive basketball game. They rely on rebounding and defense and all the rest. But I think this team is really, really buckled in, uh, buckled down and focused right now because of what happened last year. Guys like Kyle Guy and Ty Jerome, these with DeAndre Hunter, these players want it really bad right now because of what happened last year. And I think they've actually played an all-around great game uh, every single game this season from an all-phases standpoint. They've actually played a very, very good, consistent offense. They've been unbelievable defensively like they always are. Tony Bennett is just 
has just not had a lot of success in the NCAA tournament. Maybe his fortunes will change. Uh, maybe this is the year where you know they make a push to the Elite Eight. They make a push to the Final Four. Um, you know, it was only a couple of years ago when they made uh, you know the regional semis and they blew that lead to Syracuse. Maybe that was a little bit of a turning point for Virginia. They haven't really gotten past that even. Uh, it's just gotten worse since. I mean, think about them losing uh, to a, a UMBC last year as a one seed. So uh, it's going to be fascinating, I think, to watch Virginia from that storyline alone of last year losing to a 16. But I'll put Virginia in there at number three. Number four, I'm going to put Michigan. I love Michigan right now. Poole and company, they've got a ton of flat-out interchangeable players. Uh, they're a, a, a perfect example of how a Power 5 team does not have to go get one-and-done players in order to have a lot of success. In fact, Jeff Goodman just mentioned John Beeline and how he's done it at Michigan. You know, he Goodman told me that he thinks that, uh, you know, uh, Mich he, he thought that Beeline was not going to have any success at Michigan because it was going to be tough to recruit uh, in the Detroit area and in, in that Midwest area. Well, surprise, surprise, John Beeline has done sneaky recruiting. He hasn't gotten a Zion Williamson. He hasn't gotten a Joel Okafer. He hasn't gotten a Malik Monk. Uh, he hasn't gotten... A, a one-and-done uh, gem. Uh, he's gotten a bunch of other really, really good players. Now, I know Tim Hardaway Jr. and some other players were on that Final Four run uh, from back in the 2013. But really, other than that, this has been a team that's had a lot of three- and four-year players, and this team plays well together. They do everything really, really well, and uh, they don't give up possessions. They don't beat themselves, and uh, they can shoot the three ball. So, And they're good defensively. So this is a team Michigan to watch out for in there at number Four, my fifth best team in the country. It's kind of hard. It's it, you know, for me, it's like, do I want to put Michigan State in there? Do I want to put Kentucky in there? Do I, you know, what I'm gonna put in there? I'm gonna put Auburn in there. I actually really, really like this Auburn team, and they've got some really good shifty guards. When they play some small basketball, they're a little bit more effective. Uh, they're a super fast team as well. I really like this Auburn team. Uh, I like what they did, even in a losing cause against Duke. Uh, Bruce Pearl, it might only be a matter of time before he screws up again with some kind of a sanction. But one thing is for sure, the guy can flat out coach, and he uh, is a big time master motivator. There's no hiding that. Uh, and I like Auburn in there in that spot. I know how talented Kentucky is. I know how good they are. I know how good, you know, some teams, uh, you know, as you go down Tennessee and Michigan State and all these, I know how good they are. But I like this Auburn team. I'm going to give them the number five spot right now in college basketball. The kid Brown is fantastic. So I'll go Gonzaga one. I'll go Duke two. I'll go Virginia three, which is close to number four, Michigan. And then I will take at number five, the Auburn Tigers. How about that? A basketball school now, Auburn? Yeah, normally a football school, but a basketball school in my top five power rankings. This is the ML Sports Platter, nine minutes with Mike Lindsley on IGTV, YouTube, and Facebook. Make sure you hit me on Twitter at Mike L Sports. Download and subscribe to my podcast. Share it. You can do so at Spotify, Google Podcasts, and Apple Podcasts. And of course, get down here where I'm seated right now the cozy confines of Rosie's Corner, the official pizza shop of the ML Sports Platter. They're doing their fish special today for Friday. You can get with mac and cheese. Uh, they have chicken and biscuits during the week as well. They've oftentimes got pork. Uh, awesome, awesome place to eat. The pizza wing combos are to die for as well. And don't forget, every single NFL day, Sunday, Monday, Thursday that we just had last night with the Cowboys and Saints, nice one for Dallas, by the way, you can get the $40 ML Sports Platter Special. It's unbelievable. Large one topping, large chef salad, 24 wings, 2 liter soda. 40 bucks, that's it. And you can feed a huge group for all of the NFL games. Big thanks to Jason and Jody and the gang. They do an awesome job here at Rosie's Corner, the official pizza shop of the ML Sports Platter. As I always tell you, enjoy the games.